my name is Jessie Ace. I'm part of a group of enabled warriors that you've probably never heard of. We're fighting back against our invisible illness and taking the dis out of disability. We don't give sympathy to our symptoms. They enable us to be the warrior that we are. If you asked doctors and nurses, they'd say what we're doing is impossible. But pushing the limits of our conditions is something that we have to break through every single day. So we push the limits. We are mentally strong. And we can do anything. The question is, how far can we push those limits? This podcast will give you the answers. I'm Jessie Ace, and this is the Disabled to Enable podcast. And this is Jesse Ace, and today we have an amazing guest on our show called Nora. Say hi, Nora. Hi. <laughs> hey. Nora is a writer, runner, and lover of Netflix, aren't we all? She lives in Elizabethtown with her husband and two children. She's diagnosed with the at the age with sorry, sorry, start again. Diagnosed with MS at the age of thirty-five. And this is the incredible thing. After her diagnosis, Nora changed her diet, lost 180 pounds. Oh my goodness. And she, then she became a runner, which is just fabulous. And if you're listening in England, 180 pounds is not finance. That is actual weight. <laughs> just to avoid confusion. So since she became a runner, she has completed two half marathons, one full marathon, and is planning two half marathons for 2019. That is phenomenal. I'm so excited to talk about this. Nora plans to spend the rest of her years on earth spreading joy and laughter and telling others about the amazing grace of Jesus. Fabulous. How are you, Nora? Are you okay? I'm doing great. Now, I've got to say... I think Nora is the most dedicated uh, person on my podcast so far because it's currently like 5 a.m. where you are. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 5 a.m. We're getting, that getting ready to go out on the run after this. Yeah. <laughs> and you're going for a run after this. This is phenomenal. I love it. Oh, my goodness. So we're going to find out a lot more about Nora today and a lot more about um, running and, and what she does. So she also runs a website called Not Today MS, which I think is like a fabulous um, message as well. It's like not today, MS. <laughs> Amazing. Right. So, can you tell us more about like who you are and what you do, kind of day to day? Oh, sure. So, I'm a mom of two. I have uh, two kiddos. They're not kiddos anymore. They're one is in college and the other oh. is um, getting ready to go into high school, but they're still my kiddos. Mom of two. I have um, a husband, and we had a sweet little life here in Kentucky in the United States. Oh. Just love it here. And I'm a secretary day by day. So oh, cool. I, okay. I love, I, if you study Enneagram, Enneagram's big nerdy thing that we're doing right now, personality test, I'm a two, uh, which is the helper. And that's what I love to do. I love to jump in and help people and make things happen. And so that's kind of me day to day. And that's running is like a new thing. That's that's in the last three and a half years of my life. That's a, really? something new that I picked up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's phenomenal. So you have a, a day to day job as well, and you go running. Yeah. Like you know, you are just Wonder Woman. You're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> You're amazing. So we've kind of explained a little bit that you were diagnosed with MS at the age of 35. So can you tell us like your story? Like how did you happen? How, how did it happen? How yeah. did you get diagnosed? So I say that I'm, I'm very fortunate and I'm very lucky, but in the world of MS, I think everybody understands that you, a lot of people go years and years and years without a diagnosis. Oh yeah, totally. I had two major events instead of a lot of, a lot of my friends too had subtle symptoms over a long period of time. I had two major exacerbations that were very eye opening. The first one was by far the worst. It was uh, much like a stroke. Right. I woke up that morning, room spinning, severe vertigo, double vision, and numbness on the right side of my body, at much like a stroke. Yeah. Um, very sudden, very violent, and went to, we have emergency rooms uh, at our hospital, and that, that's where I went, and they did a CT that morning, and didn't show up anything, but no. we know that with MS, it's, it's not going to show anything. That didn't show anything, and they were like, well you might, you know, you might have some other infections or something. Here's some antibiotics and go home and you should get better. And Ugh. I did not, it, it, no. it was about a month of, of some serious just issues until yeah. I felt more like myself 
And even then, I didn't feel right for, for a long time. And about 18 months later, I had my second exacerbation. And that time, things weren't, it wasn't nearly as bad. I really thought that I was just off balance and I had an ear infection. I really didn't. I thought I had an ear, inner ear infection. <laughs> Went to the doctor and I had had a little bit of double vision that time. And I happened to mention it, not thinking that that was a serious symptom at all. Okay. And thankfully, they jumped right on that. And the ER doctor went back and looked at my file and said, I don't like, you know, these two situations combined. So we're going to do an MRI and got a neurologist involved. And I got a di- I was diagnosed within 48 hours. So I, my story is not typical. And I feel very blessed. It was horrible. <laughs> it was a horrible experience. I, can imagine. <laughs> I was a horrible patient. I was one of those. Yeah. I was like, please just let me go home. And the doctor's like, if I keep you here, I can run these tests quickly and you can get a diagnosis quickly. Yeah. And so that's what we did. Yeah. That's crazy. So your symptoms were actually quite similar to mine because um, so you had numbness down the right side. I had numbness down the left side, mm-hmm. uh, but it came completely out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And I was like a perfectly healthy, normal person. I was never ill, like never, ever ill. And then all mm-hmm. of a sudden it was the last day of university and I felt really weird that day. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, it was like those three years that I'd spent working up towards this degree was suddenly just like, oh, well, I now can't hold a pencil or, or whatever. So oh, I'm like, yeah. I was like, yeah. what does this mean? <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what, yeah, really that, that was a high stress. That was probably a really high stress day for you. Oh, and, yeah. and both of my, both of my events, I mean, I can remember there were, very stressful things that happened like yeah. right before that happened and and they say that that has something to do with it but yeah I would say that would be a high yeah. stress day for you too <laughs> yeah it's amazing isn't it it really is gosh so day to day you're like what is your MS like what kind of symptoms do you do you show for the most part there's not a whole lot I, I do struggle with fatigue when I've done too much I have to, um, I just have to be very aware of what I'm saying yes to Mm -hmm. and what I'm asking of my body to do where I didn't have to do that before. I mean, I didn't have the same energy level. That's, that's been the kind of interesting thing about my story too, is living 350 pounds for much of my adult life up until the point that I was diagnosed, my energy level stunk compared to, to now, but I just have to be careful and not take on too much, do too much, expect too much out of myself. Thursdays are a day that we have a lot going on. I have a full day of work and then I've got, uh, my daughter has dance right after school. So, or right after I get home from work. So I have to hurry up and make her dinner. And then <sighs> we have that. And then we have stuff at church going on. And so I'm not home where I can relax until eight thirty at night. And every Thursday I have to, at that point, I can't expect myself to do anything else. I have to be like, okay, it's time for me to get in bed and just be quiet for a little bit. So fatigue is really the one that I struggle with the most. If I exert myself too much, if I'm running really hard, which doesn't happen often, I'm, I'm pretty good about dialing it down and, and running at my pace. But if I'm really pushing it on a certain day or, or it's hotter than it normally is, my right side will tingle a little bit. Okay. I've gotten to a point where I'm okay with that. Uh, my neurologist says it's called a, a pseudo flare. And when you're, when you're pushing your body, it can happen. And she's like, you can do one of two things. You can either slow down, walk, or if you keep pushing, it will get better. And, and so usually I'll dial it down a little bit. I'll, I'll, you know, do a slow jog or something and it'll get better. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not bad. And if I'm, if I'm super tired, I'll notice when I go to write, cause I'm right handed that my handwriting doesn't look the way that I want it to. No one else would yeah. notice it. Yeah, that's so my, Mine's like that as well. Yeah. <laughs> it suddenly gets oh, out. It it's terrible. Fr- it's frustrating because it's yeah. like, I think it's girls. It's silly, but it's girls. We kind of identify ourselves with our handwriting sometimes. Yeah, totally. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, it doesn't look the way that I want it to. It's frustrating, <laughs> but that's really it. I mean, and, and compared to so many of my friends, I, I feel very fortunate that that those are my my symptoms and and they're not horrible so yeah yeah no you've got really good ones really really good ones okay so what's what's the one thing that you've learned since having MS oh not to take things for granted (laughs) I really I really search for the joy in each every day and I don't I really don't sweat the small stuff as much anymore I still have to check myself every once in a while my husband's really great about 
keeping me in check, but, you know, just, just making sure that I am finding the joy in each and every day and, and just enjoying every, you know, we get, we are not, none of us are guaranteed time on this earth or our bodies, you know, like all of us. And I think MS makes you more aware of that. You know, it makes you just a lot more appreciative of the days when you feel good and of the days when you're able to do things like run or, or, you know, do something really cool or spend time with your family. It makes you really appreciative of that. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing that I found as well. It's just, you just, you know, when you, when I wake up and I can actually feel everything and I'm not like overly tingly or whatever, I'm kind of like, you know what, this is a good day. Yeah. <laughs> Today's going to be fine. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's what we've got to remember as MS. It's because it's just, it can change so suddenly as well without any warning sometimes. And it's just, oh, it's hard work. Yeah. It is hard work to have MS sometimes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What would you say has really changed in your life since you started living with MS? I mean, I know you've, you've said like you've, you've managed your energy a little bit more and, and that sort of thing, but what, yeah. what's the one thing that's really changed? Well, I mean, for me, it's, my story is so weird just because we changed our eating. I mean, well, that's really probably the main thing that has changed is that we changed our eating. You know, we had the, the total American diet before all of this, you know, is, uh, <laughs> you know, breading on everything and, Mm -hmm. you know, McDonald's and and all of that kind of stuff, highly processed foods all the time. And that was the one thing in my research right after I got diagnosed. I mean, Mm because I think we all hit the internet in this, in this age of of internet, (laughs) internet, we start doing research. And the first thing that I really saw was, okay, so this is a chronic inflammation of your immune system. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how are things, what, what are things that cause inflammation? And I start looking into food and I'm like, oh, it's very obvious. Everything I'm eating causes <laughs> inflammation and all of the foods that are anti-inflammatory, I'm not eating at all. I'm never touching. Mm-hmm. And I thought I was on some kind of groundbreaking research. And then I discovered that there's a million books already about this and um, I'm kind of late to the game. So anyway, I jumped on all of that and we started really focusing on cutting out sugar, dairy, wheat, those Mm -hmm. kind of things from our diet and really focusing on putting in things that were high antioxidant, high anti-inflammatory and instantly the weight started to melt off my, I had been on a diet. I was telling somebody this the other day. I had been on a diet, I swear, my entire life. I was a chubby kid and and uh, I was obese by the time I was, you know, 16. And so I was constantly thinking about my weight on a diet, trying different diets. Things didn't work. I'd have mild success. This was the first time I just changed my diet for my health. Mm-hmm. And I didn't count a calorie. I didn't count a carb. I didn't count anything. I just ate healthy food and weight melted off my body. I lost 50 pounds in the first month, which is incredible. Okay not trying, not, not doing any exercise at all. I didn't do anything exercise wise for the first year and a hundred over a hundred pounds had melted off my body at that point. Wow. And that's, that's sort of when I picked up running, but anyway, it, that's been the main thing that has changed is my eating and focusing on those kind of things. And as a result, losing this weight and being at a healthy weight for the first time, my entire life, that's been the main thing. So I, you know, I have a mess and that's a struggle, but yet there's so many blessings that have come from it that I feel like I feel disqualified sometimes to speak about a mess because I'm like, <laughs> my life is so much better because of a mess. Um, and I think that we all have that potential. I think we all have that potential to, to use this diagnosis as a way to, you know, as a catalyst into pushing us into a better life, a more, oh, you absolutely. know, richer yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. That, that makes total sense. I mean, like since I've been diagnosed as well, I've changed my diet similar to yours. I did like crazy amounts of research into anti-inflammatory foods and all that. Sort yeah. Of stuff. Yeah. Cause you do, don't you? That's the, the natural, <coughs> sorry, the natural thing to do. Mm-hmm. And I think I got to a point where um, my neurologist was actually asking me how I knew I still had MS because my symptoms had got that much better <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. than he actually thought, oh, you, you, you've like cured yourself or something. It was like, I'm like, no, I still have them. I swear I still have them. Right, right, right. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, food and, food and diet in general is just such a helpful, helpful thing when you have a, a chronic illness anyway. 
Um, so doing research into that is, is never a bad thing, I don't think. Right. As long as you don't like overdo it. <laughs> That's the only right, thing. Kind exactly. Of sacrificing your your life because you have to eat certain Exactly. Things. Yes, there's a balance. There's a balance there for sure. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> totally. So can you share with us your your top tip to feeling empowered? Oh, I it's a bit of a tip. bit of a strange question, maybe, but top tip to feeling empowered. Yeah. Um, I would say just challenging myself. You know, when we started running, I I was excited. And I'll I'll talk more about Cheryl in a minute. I know you know Cheryl too, but <laughs> Cheryl yeah. Heil was kind of my inspiration to even pick up running at all. And I would go out there to start running. And I think in the beginning it was a little bit easier because I had all this, you know, I had lost all this weight. Now I had more yeah. energy and but then, you know, the first time I challenged myself with, okay, I'm supposed to run two miles today. I've never, I've never ran two miles in my life. What? I don't even know. And you're in the middle of it and you're like, I, I can't do this. I can't. I, running is like that almost every time. That's not something that, that changes. I know you're a new runner. That's not yeah. something that changes. <laughs> even after you run a marathon, you're like, you go up to that first mile and you're like, I can't do this today. Today is not going to happen. We're doing this again. <laughs> but, but it's... <laughs> It's that challenge of, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm going to keep putting one foot in front of the other. I haven't, I'm not passed out. I'm not having, you know, an exacerbation. I'm not having like major symptoms. I'm not, you know, you don't push yourself beyond those, you know, limits totally. where you're yeah. going to get yeah. sick, but you're like, no, just, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep moving and you accomplish something that is, that makes me feel so amazing. And oh, I think yeah. that's why we continue to race. I mean, we're never going to win a race. We're slow runners. But we, we race. Never say never. Come on. <laughs> we race because, you know, it's that feeling of accomplishment and, and running is a sport that there's no one ever, you know, there's a ton of losers and no one ever boos them. You know what I mean? Like no one, you know, there's only the really the only winners. They're like crazy awesome. You know, there's so oh. many people cheering you on and everybody is so, you know, if a runner falls down, you've got all these people helping them back up and helping oh, them to finish. Nice. Or, uh, when we were running the marathon at the end, marathons are, are a different animal because it's so quiet. The half, the second half of it, you've lost all your half marathoners. They're all oh. finished and celebrating somewhere and you're running and it feels so quiet because there's not a whole lot of marathoners out there. And we were at mile 2023 20, and I was struggling. I mean, I, we're, we're going along, but I mean, I was like, how do I quit? Where do I sign up? Like, is there a bus to come get me? I'm so done. And there were some of the other people that were with us, you know, they could pick up on, I'm struggling. They're like, you got this girl, just keep going. You got this. And then we got like energized and we got going and we passed one of those runners. He's like, see, I told you, you got it. You know, you keep going. And, and then we could encourage other runners. And I just love that. That's that it's such an empowering sport and it doesn't have to be running. I think anything that we do that challenges us and that might be, yeah. you know, I'm going to walk to the mailbox today and I'm going to walk back, you know, that's okay. Do what you can. That's what Cheryl says. Do what you can and don't give up. And, and I think that's an awesome motto to have. It really is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, I mean, like, so, so as I was saying to you before the call, like I, I've started running about three, four weeks ago now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, it's been going great. And I've, I was never a runner to start off with, like before I master anything, I, I'm not sporty. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an illustrator. I'm not yeah. So I just sit at a computer all day, like drawing pictures. Like you know. <laughs> I, I wasn't an active person at all. So everybody has been saying to me because I've been documenting this, this journey that I'm going on on Facebook live. Mm -hmm. And the reason yeah. that I've been doing that is so that mainly so that it's accountable because people then come up to me, friends and family come up to me and say, Oh, how's your running going? And I'm like, I feel yes. like to go then. It's like, a, there exactly. is no choice yeah. to do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's so crazy. Oh, so, so what made you start running as opposed to like, uh, I don't know, gymnastics or archery or something? <laughs> You know, it's one of those things when I was in school and in school here in the States, in, in physical education, PE, we had to run the mile every year growing up oh. and running the mile for me meant I would run for a few feet and then walk the majority of the rest of it. <laughs> if I finished in 20 minutes, I was like, okay, I did what I could. And I remember watching the girls who were athletic, the ones that were sporty and, and played um, different sports and mm. they ran and it looked so easy. 
And I always thought, would that would be so cool. I wish I was like that. Not ever thinking that was in the realm of possibility for me, ever. And so when I lost weight and I heard about Cheryl's story, I'm like, I would, you know, I need to start exercising. I knew at that point, okay, I'm not going to injure myself. I've, I've lost some weight, you know, so I, I feel better about getting out there and doing something high impact. Yeah. And I thought, I'm going to, I'm just going to try running. And I had seen, you know, videos of half marathons and that kind of stuff. So as I'm picking up running and running a little bit, I said to my husband, why don't we like train? Would, would that be weird to train for a half marathon? Is that like a cool thing? And that, at that point I was losing, you know, we were on path for me to get to my goal weight. And mm -hmm. I was like, wouldn't that be like the exclamation point of all of this is not today, MS. I mean, we had started saying that from the beginning. That was like something that Love he would that. have to each other. I'm like, wouldn't that be the greatest way to say not today MS is like to, you know, I've lost all this way. I've made myself as healthy as I could be. And then we run a half marathon. Like that's going to be like wow. kicking him in the face. I love it. Like, let's do it. <laughs> I love that. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so amazing. And we keep mentioning Cheryl as well. I just wanted to say that Cheryl is going to come on the podcast as well in a few weeks time. I'm so excited. Yeah. So excited to hear her story. It's going to be awesome. Um, so the one question that I did really want to ask you was that um, when you started running in like particular, when you started training for the first time, what was your kind of like, what did you do to recover? Because I found like the first couple of times I've been running, I've come back and I've just been like, absolutely wiped out. Like I just need, literally needed to lie down for a few hours. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's getting better. But I mean, what's your kind of recovery technique? Well, stretching is super important and we we get you know get home and we stretch pretty much yeah. immediately and immediately get in some calories for oh, me that. <laughs> we usually do first thing in the morning and we usually do a for the most part depending on how long we're running we do a fasted run which means we don't eat anything we just you know take water with us and go so we'll hit we'll eat breakfast pretty much immediately which is usually like eggs and maybe some fruit um and coffee i'm a big coffee drinker i love coffee. oh i love it <laughs> um, so we'll we'll do that and then i try to keep moving which i know that that sounds like no you should rest or whatever but yeah for me I if i that, sit though. i get stiff Yes. And so if, as long as I've got my, and I don't plan something crazy for, we usually run our big runs on Saturdays. Yeah. I don't plan stuff crazy for that day for the most part. It's usually like hanging out with my family or, or, you know, maybe doing some errands, running, doing some shopping or something, but just something so that I continue to move because if I just stop, then I am so stiff and sore yeah. and it's, it's no good. But yeah, it's just being mindful of the time with the marathon training. That is very much like working two full-time jobs. Like you've got your job and then you've got the marathon <laughs> is a whole job in and of itself. And that was, I couldn't schedule a whole lot of other things because it was waking up at four 30 in the morning on a weekday, yeah. going out running six miles and then having a full day of work. And then, you know, maybe writing my daughter to dance or whatever. And oh then, my goodness. <laughs> and then I had to just, you know, like be still, I couldn't, I couldn't have anything else. Friends would be like, you want to go out to dinner? No, like, <laughs> no, my house. I'm not going to bed. <laughs> talk to me here, but I have to lay down and be still for a little bit. But try not to schedule too much. And, mm. and yeah. Well, that is a huge key. Just like the energy management thing is something that I've, I'm yeah. battling with. I think everybody is battling with it and yeah. it is it is a hard one because sometimes you 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 kind of don't know when you're pushing through and when you're kind of pushing too much so right. it's like right. <laughs> but that's yeah, exactly. the, kind of the chance that you take is it's just yeah crazy so tell us about a time when you really challenged ms and won like you know i, I know you, you do marathons and things but like what's the one time that you've really had to just push through you know, I think there have been, my husband is the only one that really sees the the bad days. I think yeah. I'm one of those people yeah. that I'm trying to be more open and vulnerable and, and honest about how I feel. But for the most part, he's the one that's, that sees the bad days. And there have been times where I am not feeling well at all. And when I really don't feel well, I'll feel like dizzy and off balance. And, and mm -hmm. that makes me nauseated. And really don't feel well and maybe there's a lot of things going on and we've had plans with like family or whatever and it's 
I had so lucky that I have such a great support system because I want to, he knows that I want to do everything and I, and I don't want to rest and I don't want to dial back. Yes. So he yeah. will do everything <laughs> in his power to make sure that I am resting as much as possible and not doing too much. And then when it's, there was a day that I wanted so badly, we had plans with our family and and we were going up uh, to another city it's about 45 minutes away to go spend time with them and have a big fun day. And I felt so miserable and he just loved on me, prayed up, prayed with me. And he's like, you know, just, we'll do what we can. If you can't go, it's okay. You can't go, but let's just do what we can. And, and I, that was one of those days where I remember saying not today, MS several times. So I was like, not today. <laughs> I want to spend time with my family. Like, no, I want to get, you know, like spend time with my family. And so just yeah. working through it, it's, it's not that you do more than you can, or you push yourself through stuff. You've got to rest. But mm. for that particular day, it was like, no, I, I really want, you know, to do this. And so I just took things, I took it little by little. I didn't put on as much makeup as I maybe would on a typical day and, and we just did what we could and I rested when I got there and I, and then I ended up feeling better Then you know, all of those symptoms went away. It's just weird. It's unpredictable. Yeah. You don't know what you're, you know, what's going on. But that was one of those days where I remember saying, no, you don't get to tell me that I get to spend time with my family. I want to go hang out. Good on you. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I love that. That is a true warrior mentality. I think. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's funny because like you sound so much like me. It's just like I literally don't stop until I'm literally passed out on the floor, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then my husband's kind of like, "Think you should go and sleep now." <laughs> oh, I don't want to. I'm like, I'm gonna go go and go to sleep. Oh, Aren't the God. caregivers like that's? I I think we talk about, and I love meeting other people with MS and and MS warriors. I love that, and I love talking about all of that. But I also love talking to them about their caregivers because I feel like yeah. they are the un unsung heroes of our lives they because they, totally they keep us in check and they, they make us do our things and make us take our medicine and, and all of that <laughs> stuff. And, and I mean, I don't know where I'd be without, without mine for yeah. sure. Oh no, I'm seriously, I'm the same. We, we've come up with a system as well where he can kind of determine the level of tiredness that I, that I've have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he's like, oh, what, what number are you today? I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm like a seven, you know, I'm kind of tired, but I'm okay. You know, I can do a bit more. And then he yeah. knows to like, okay. Yeah. But uh, if I'm like, if I say I'm like a nine and a half or something, he'll be like, right, okay. Well, we won't do that today that we're going to do. Right. We'll do that tomorrow. <laughs> right. right. And it's so nice. It's so nice to have that, that support. I'm so grateful to him. <laughs> so anyway, to, to my next question, what is your kind of inspiration to get out of bed each day? Well, I honestly, it's, it's my faith. I feel like, I feel like I was put here for a reason and I feel like I was given yeah. MS for a reason. Yeah. And every time I get a chance to spread joy or talk about Jesus or talk about what God has done in my life, then that's, that is like my greatest thing. And, and whether that's at work, um, where it, you know, it doesn't come up as, as, as often, but it's, you know, I just get to be a positive presence and I get to, uh, love on my little circle of people and, and pray for them and help them with stuff. I'm, we're always, you know, putting on an event or doing something and I get to jump in and help, you know, that gives me purpose. Just, just being a help and being, uh, involved in stuff and, and, all of that. I love that. And I love, uh, my kids are both super talented and awesome and, and I love to brag on them. And so when they're, when they're doing stuff and all about stuff, I, I just love that. I love finding joy in those small moments and I love finding joy in the big moments and, and getting to have a platform to speak about MS or speak about uh, my health or whatever, or, or Jesus. I love that. So that's really what gives me purpose and keeps me going. I think we all are faced when we're diagnosed, we're, we're faced with two possible outcomes or two, two choices. We can either wallow in despair and yeah. fear the future mm -hmm. and, you know, look at the statistics and be terrified, or we can choose, I'm going to live in this moment and I'm just going to focus on what I can do right in this moment. And I'm going to do what I can and I'm going to have joy and, and th look at the positives and, I think when we do that, then I think it makes this disease more manageable. I really do. I feel like when we choose the despair, 
if I, if I were sad and laying in bed, I'm going to feel bad. I'm really going to feel bad all day. I mean, it's, you know what I mean? I think it exacerbates the symptoms when, when you just choose the depression. And that's, if I can do anything to inspire anybody to not choose that and to choose the joy, yeah. then I've won. Then, I, then that's a victory for me, for sure. <laughs> Oh, I totally agree with you. I really do. And I, I do a lot of work within, um, like, I, I love psychology. I love how, the way that the mind works. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's a really important thing to stay positive. And there'll be people out there that go, oh, well, you can't just cure anything with positivity and all that sort of stuff. But actually, it helps a considerable amount <laughs> to just stay positive and to just be like, do you know what? No, I'm not going to accept this stu- circumstance as a, as a bad thing. I'm going to make it to a good thing. I'm going to change it into something. I'm going to inspire other people. So I think that is amazing. I think it's amazing what you're doing. Oh, thank you. Well done for that. <laughs> okay. So my next question is a little bit of a, it, it kind of, um, I don't know, like, divides people I guess but uh how do you think invisible disability now anybody listening to this podcast will know I hate the term disability because I am not lacking in ability I am just creatively disabled <laughs> <That's all. laughs> but how do you think invisible disability is viewed by the general public and how do you think we can like as a community change that perception. Okay. I think this is huge. Yeah. It's, I remember my first exacerbation that was, that was by far the worst and it was the longest recovery months, really months and months. And I remember I was trying to communicate with kind of our small group at church, like about my handwriting. Like I couldn't, you know, my husband saw everything and my closest friends saw me and they knew okay something was really wrong like this doesn't add up this doesn't make sense Mm -hmm. but I remember I'm just telling this group who hasn't seen me since since the event happened like you know the one thing is my handwriting is off now I was able to text and type this and that's no problem you know like using my thumbs was no problem but they didn't see you know my handwriting I'm sleeping all the time I'm having a hard time walking and and all of those things and I remember one of our friends and he didn't mean anything about it. He's like, Oh, handwriting is no big deal. And I'm like, you don't, you don't get it. Like no. you don't get it. And we had like a, a get together. And I remember like just trying to, I'm sure to everyone I appeared, like something was off, but nobody knew how hard it was for me to be there. Mm. I had to uh, go up and down steps and I had to really take my time and really think about it. Yeah, And that was a time too, where I felt like all of my words, I had to think very hard to form a word in my mouth, mm. to use my hand. I had to think really hard. I mean, I think we, we with MS start to really realize what those neurons and, and all, all the nerves. Yes. <laughs> so I remember thinking really hard about all of those things. And I'm like, they don't know how exhausting this is mm. because you would do that. You know, I would write a list. I wrote a grocery list and it took me 25 minutes and I had like 10 <laughs> items on there. And I was absolutely exhausted after. And so, like I said, the people closest to me knew because I communicated and I, and I said, this is what's happening and everybody else didn't. And there's something very isolating in that. And, and it makes you feel, you know, if you focus on that, then you feel isolated and you feel like, you know, misunderstood. And I think that's been the key for me is communicating that is just being open and honest and educating people and trying to trying to come up with things that make them understand. I think Selma Blair, I don't know if you follow her at all. She's oh, yeah. American. <laughs> yeah, I love, love her. And I, and I love that she's being so honest and vulnerable and open right now yeah. about what it's like to be in an active exacerbation. But she, you know, in the beginning, she said, it's like my brain is giving directions to my left side with a broken GPS. And I'm like, yeah, yes, that is a great <laughs> analogy. Like trying to come up with great things to make them understand. Yeah. And I think the more we do, the more we're able to educate those people who don't understand how we live, yeah. then, then that's going to make all of that better. It's just, it's a matter of communication and education and trying not to get offended when people say things that people, one person said, and I, and I love her dearly. She's, she is a very good friend of mine, but and she probably doesn't even remember saying this, but after I was diagnosed, she said, well, at least it's not cancer. 
And it's like, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. yes, I get that. I hate cancer. And I've had friends that have dealt with cancer and cancer is horrible, but yeah. this is a lifelong sentence, you know, mm-hmm. like this is the rest of my life. Whereas sometimes cancer is, you know, treatment and we're in and out of here in a year and you get to move on with your life. This is lifelong. This is forever. And so, I mean, I think it's just educating people and helping them to understand, you know, what it is that we go through. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, like we, we look normal from the outside most of the time. Right. So how is anybody supposed to know that something's different Mm -hmm. on the inside? It's like, you know, I, I totally get that. And it's like when, so I've written a lot of a few uh, blogs at the moment where I've, t- where I've kind of spoke about the, when I've used my disabled badge, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> the words will come to my head eventually. Yeah. Um, when I've used my disabled badge and uh, people have looked at me strange and they've made comments and, and that kind of thing when I've just kind of got out the car and walked because they're like, well, you yeah. can't park there because there's a, it's a disabled space. Like you should be in a wheelchair. You should be, do- and they, you know, and we have this preconceived idea that because it has an icon of a wheelchair on right. the underwear, it says disabled parking or whatever, right. you automatically should be in a wheelchair. And I think that's right. a wrong thing. So right. Do you really? Yeah. And that's very yeah. frustrating. I've had friends, I've had several friends had to deal with that as well. And that's so frustrating. And I, I just, I feel like we as a society right now, and maybe this has always been forever, but it feels like right now we just make assumptions yeah. And we're very vocal about what oh, yeah. know, people speak <laughs> out of out of those things, and and especially on social media, under that veil of of you know oh, anonymity okay. with with social media, we get to say whatever we want. And, oh, I just hate that because it's <laughs> if we tried to understand each other better, and if we tried to believe the best in others, yeah. then it would make the world so much better. It really sure. would. It would because you know to start off with, I was really annoyed at those people and angry at them because they were like, "Well, how? How? What is their right to judge me? And you know, you right. know me." But then I kind of thought about it and I thought, actually, you know, to them, I just look like a normal person. They probably assume it's my like grandma's disabled badge or whatever. <laughs> right. And you know, it's you like, just want a good parking spot. <laughs> Sorry. I said, you just want a good parking spot. That's what exactly. Yeah. Like, she just know. wants to be close to. <laughs> so you know at the end of the day like how how can I be angry at someone who just looks looks at me and sees a normal person so right I always use that as a as a way to educate people and yeah, just kind yeah of, sure. you know change that get rid of that judgment really right oh, it's crazy I don't know <laughs> so are you ready for some super quick secrets okay yes <laughs> <laughs> so enabled warriors this is the part of the show where we find out a little bit more about the personality of our guest with some super quick secrets Woo-hoo. i love this round i'm really i'm actually really bad at this round because i say the question and then um as soon as i hear the answer i want to talk about the answer i'm like yeah right. be a quick <laughs> secret <laughs> round. but i'm like oh my gosh we've got to talk about that okay no so most inspiring book you've ever read okay the shack <laughs> the shack and i should have looked at the Ooh. author but the shack Yes. Okay. What's that about? <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's a, it's a fictional story about this guy whose daughter is murdered and that's awful. She's kidnapped and murdered and Ooh. that's horrible. And he has this weekend with God and I don't want to give too much away, but it, it's this weekend of, of going through healing and forgiveness and oh. working through the anger because I mean in the in the way that his daughter was kidnapped and, and murdered is there's you know stirred up a lot of anger and resentment and in, in him and so anyway it's it's a beautiful book it's awesome it's a quick read it's really really good but that's that's nice. probably the most inspirational I've read in a long time <laughs> my reading list is getting so long because we're doing these podcasts because okay. I'm like oh yeah. my gosh that sounds amazing I'm going to read yeah. that too <laughs> okay super quick secrets Jess come on Favorite uh, comfort food? <laughs> oh, kettle chips, which that's, when you say kettle chips, that's just like, uh, they're just, I don't know, they're supposed to be healthier cooked. Like usually I'll buy kettle okay. chips that are cooked in, in olive oil or something like that. So potato yeah. chips that are supposedly healthier. Cool. Kettle chips and then homemade guacamole. My husband makes oh, the I best love guacamole. guacamole. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, I love it. <laughs> What's the weirdest thing you've ever done? Oh goodness, weirdest thing <laughs> I've ever done. That's a hard one. Oh man. And I tried to think of some of these the other day. Weirdest thing I've ever done. 
probably okay this is okay so here we go I'm gonna be <laughs> probably pee on the side of the road when I'm running oh. <laughs> so there you go That's okay see yeah. this is the kind of thing I, mean. like, I want to go into nowhere. that now and find out a bit more. <laughs> when you're out in the middle of nowhere and there's there's nowhere to oh. run it like okay I can either like have my bladder burned or just <laughs> on the side of the road and that's what I'm going to do yeah. I love that that's amazing yeah. I've heard of marathon runners kind of doing that before but I didn't know if it like it was actually true but then I guess it is you try I tried to route my my runs to be near a uh we have a park a really lovely uh lake near our house and there are some some portable potties that are out there so we'll try to run out there or try to map it where we're near a gas station but then I mean there's on those 20 mile days and that kind of stuff when you're training for a marathon it's like you're out in the middle of nowhere you gotta do something so. <laughs> brilliant well this is what I've all got to look forward to you know so yeah, one, there you go. So. <laughs> yeah right exactly <laughs> oh wow that's so funny what is the favorite place you've ever visited oh probably the Bahamas I uh, oh, went there uh, several long time ago, long, long time ago, but it, the water is so beautiful. I love the Caribbean. I love, I love warm and sun and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, that's something I've discovered as, as I have MS is that I have to be careful with hot and sun and all of that yes. kind of thing. But yeah. I love, I love the beach and tropical and all of that stuff. Oh. I love that. Just, mm -hmm. just oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I want to go there so bad. Okay, are you a dog person or a cat person? Dog. Yes, yes my girl. Get in there. <laughs> and what is the scariest thing that you've ever done? Uh, run a marathon. Yeah. For sure. Yes, for <laughs> sure. That was the scariest thing I've ever done. It's so scary. In fact, I think about doing it again. And I mean, the fear comes up. I mean, it, it really was the scariest thing. I lost how many toenails? Five, six oh. toenails. I'm not kidding. Yeah. No kidding. No. Lost a lot of toenails. Agony that my body went through after it was done. And I'm not going to gross you out with details, but <laughs> there's a lot of things that happen to you when you ask your body to do that. And I just, it would take a lot for me to do that again. It, it was, it was terrifying, but I mean, okay. there's like this weird thing with a runner because you're like... <laughs> I'd kind of like to do that marathon. That sounds fun. So yeah, yeah I'm back in the stage. Good, but I'm back in the stage of thinking about it again. So <laughs> I suppose half marathons like... are not nearly that bad. Half marathons are not nearly. <laughs> Full marathon is just it's scary. It's scary. Okay. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I've got so much to look forward to. I suppose it's yeah. fun as well, like, you know, when you have kids and everybody says like, oh, you're going to have more. And you're kind of like, oh, no. Yeah. Like that was exactly. Thing. That's, what Cheryl, anyway. that's what Cheryl told me. That's exactly what Cheryl told me when, when we were done. She was like, I know this is how you feel right now. Cause she felt pretty miserable the, the day that we ran, we both ran together. <laughs> she was texting me. We were both from our hotel rooms dying and she's texting me and she's like, um, I know you feel miserable now, but I promise you, you'll be talking about the next one on the drive home tomorrow. <laughs> and we didn't, we didn't quite start talking about it then, but I've, in the last several months, I'm like, you know, I think, I, you know, I've got some in my head that I would like to do. And I'm like, you know, I could start training then and, you know, mapping out my, my time. Thinking about it. <laughs> That's amazing. You'll do it. You'll do another one. <laughs> so favorite hobby. Oh, makeup. Makeup. I love okay. makeup. I love That's collecting amazing. makeup. I love watching makeup videos. I'm a makeup junkie. I love makeup. That is, okay. that's my thing that I do kind of on the side for fun. That's my little creative outlet. And I love, I love makeup. I love that. That's amazing. Yeah. So what is a hobby that you've always wanted to try out, but you've not quite done it yet? Hiking. And, and Hiking. we've done a little bit of that, you know, super easy hiking trails but I would love like that's something that I really think I'd like to pick up next is you know seeing those people who do those crazy hikes and they get to see these yeah. awesome heights or these these great waterfalls I'm like yeah. I would love to do that I'd love to have like some awesome hiking shoes and the poles and like get into hiking get all into hiking so but oh. it may it may be happening sometime in the next 
in the near future so we'll see you never know well you have the endurance yeah. you know you have the stamina because you build it up after doing your marathon maybe yeah so, yeah you know maybe that's no it's a life. different thing it's using some different muscle sets so it would be <laughs> i would i would be having to work on them a little bit but yeah <laughs> but never say never you can do it right right <laughs> So where's the best place that uh, warriors can find out about you and what you do? Okay. My website is not today MS on Facebook. I am it's facebook.com slash not today MS Instagram. I'm not today MS one. Okay. <laughs> and, and also my email is not today MS one at gmail.com. But um, my website really is, is the best place to go. I, I blog about once a week uh, about, what's going on in my life, what's happening. I had, a, we blogged weekly our marathon training. So you can go back and read all of that. I love that. It's sort of like a, a journal of, of what we went through and because there were lots of different ups and downs in that training. So there's all kinds of stuff on there. Amazing. I did have a quick read before we, <laughs> quick read even, uh, before I came online. And it was just like, amazing i love everything that you you talk about it's just so Aww. relatable and just so like oh so empowering so it's amazing I try to be i try to be real and i try to spread joy uh, all at the same time so totally you definitely do that oh, thank you. <laughs> definitely it's been an absolute honor to have you on the podcast today nora you oh, are thank amazing. you so much <laughs> thanks so much for having me sorry i said thanks so much for having me oh you're welcome you're welcome Okay, so lastly, before we go, slightly odd question. What is the best thing about having MS? Oh, probably that perspective, having that, that daily perspective of, you know, things could be so much worse. Yeah. And totally I'm going to enjoy today and, and, what, and whatever I can do today, I'm going to celebrate it. I'll, I'll always be thankful for MS for that is, is it's yeah. really changed my attitude and, and my mood in, in that way. That's Focusing amazing. on the good. Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. So I hope you've learned a lot today, Enabled Warriors. And remember, you can connect with Nora at nottodayms. That's all one word, nottodayms.com. So you can go and connect with Nora there. And thank you so, so much again for being on the podcast. It's been amazing. And hopefully we've inspired lots of people today. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Hi. All right. If you want to fight back against your invisible illness and help take the dis out of disability, then join the tribe on Facebook, facebook.com slash enabled warriors. If you love this podcast, click that subscribe button and never miss another episode. And remember warriors, stay enabled.